the Volkswagen Type 181 was uh, produced from 1968, uh, from 1968 to 1983, and uh, and under several different names and, and sold throughout the world. But here in the U.S., it was only available in 1973 and 1974 as the Thang, the Volkswagen Thang. And it was a, you know, kind of versatile vehicle, but it was also kind of a budget vehicle as far as Volkswagen is concerned, not as far as the retail public was concerned. But um, it, you know, reused, you know, common VW parts. It's on a uh, Carmen Ghia pan and features, you know, as you can see, turn signals, headlights, so forth, used on the Beatles. And so it, it really was a, a vehicle that was fairly cost effective for Volkswagen to produce. But due to safety laws and everything in the U.S., um, it, it wasn't uh, offered here after 1974. What we're looking at here is a 1973. You can tell, you know, without the, the big air scoops on the side, that's the, the giveaway between a 73 and 74. And with, like, you know, most Volkswagens, uh, if, you know, the air-cooled type, uh, it's been greatly adulterated. I mean, hard to find unless you go to stock two VW classic VWs that look alike. Um, they're, they're one of the most personalized vehicles on the planet. And so this is a pretty clean 1973 VW thing. We'll just do a quick little walk around here. It's, you know, you can tell it has some aftermarket uh, bumpers, um, tires and wheels. It's got the cage. Um, rear vents the rear bumper tail lights look familiar <laughs> and so that's you know the VW thing four doors they had different uh, options for the top you know, soft tops, hard tops, so forth. So, let's take a little closer look at this vehicle, which we're going to be converting to electric, of course. Well, as with the Volkswagens of this vintage, uh, you know, the dash is rather sparse. This has a few added things, which... Some will go away. This has dual fuel tanks, which we'll take a look at. But you got your headlight switch, and then this was a switch for the the two tanks, front and rear. And then you've got your emergency flashers, and then they added uh, auxiliary lights and uh, a fan for the oil cooler, and they've got uh, oil temperature and cylinder head temperature gauges. Um, big stash area right there instead of a glove box. You can see the, the cage, aftermarket seats. The grab handle in the front passenger side here. The customer kept the rear bench. He didn't have it in the car. I don't know if you're afraid it would fly out on the trailer on its trip to our facility. But anyway, that's missing. I also noticed the little piece here that the uh, seat goes to. So when you fold the seat down, the seats fold down, but they come up like this locked into place and then there's a, a, a piece that supports them here and you can see it on this passenger side here 
It's this little arm that comes up and supports that seat so that uh, you get the clearance between the, the bench and makes that flat with the, with the back part there, which in this case is taken up by this rear fuel tank. Nice tank, but it's going away. No need for it. This is the oil cooler. It was up here. And so the vehicle had, you know, several, you know, um, nice features to it. Nice cage. Uh, you know, it's a good looking uh, VW thing. So let's take a look under the, uh, under the front. The thing is, uh, this button right here is the horn. So we've got a few places where we can put things that will use this. You know, the, the, the fan switch will go away. The fuel tank switch will go away. So we can put, uh, you know, a um, couple switches in there. One of them will be reverse. So we can put that there. We've got room for our 12 volt gauge, which we always include in our conversions and the Curtis 840 display. And so the only additional one will be the JLD 404. They've got a 12 volt power outlet right there, it looks like. So, take a look under the front here. No spare, nice and clean. And so we'll be able to remove the tank, and that will be. Where the two tanks are, where be the battery packs will go. Got a little skid plate right there in the front. And the rest looks like the typical thing. Front end and pan. It's got some good shocks on this thing. You can put your weight on the bumper. It does, the vehicle doesn't squat at all. Uh, looks like kind of tight clearance here in the rear. But again, you can put weight on the rear and it it doesn't move. Pretty, pretty stiff suspension. Uh, you can see leaking on the floor here. Um, Got some uh, tie down spots here for trailering it, I guess. The lighting's not real good. But uh, yeah, it's got an aftermarket or, you know, non stock engine in it. You got the exhaust, the muffler on the side right here. So to pull this thing out, we have to remove this bumper piece because this all this bumper arrangement here goes around the the engine and is attached you know to the uh, body of the car up there so it's quite a big piece that drops down here out of the way so we'll need to get the bumper removed which is not something you normally have to do so gonna do that we've got two fuel tanks to drain and remove and then this engine. So it's got fuel and oil filters, fuel pressure, and then the breather canister over here. So a lot of stuff to to remove. You got the, the oil lines and everything. So a little more work than the, the normal set up but we'll we'll get it out of here and uh, get the thing converted over so that's uh, this is the next project that we're going to feature we've got uh, the um, 
solar with the doka that we're, you know, that we've talked about recently. We've got um, the VW bus that is uh, completed. Um, what else are we putting on video? Oh, we're going to have uh, some videos discussing the uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries and BMSs. So that's that's coming up. So I don't know what order. Maybe when you hear this, we, we've already talked about BMSs. <laughs> These aren't necessarily uh, filmed in in order of, uh, when they're you know as far as order and how they are posted on YouTube. We try to oscillate things so that we don't bore you with just one project uh, over consecutive weeks. So anyway, we're trying to be more uh, consistent on our YouTube posting, and, and which is something that you know is tough for us to do. We're extremely busy, um, but uh, and we we only show you stuff that's in our overflow here. Uh, this is our overflow warehouse, so you can see right now we just have three vehicles in here. Only two of them are customers' vehicles. Uh, the um, the transporter is actually ours, EV for you. So in front of the transporter, we've got the the 72 bus, and so this is just my personal storage and our overflow. So we've got the thing and the bus and uh, the bus is going out and I think we have another beetle that will be coming to this location. We're trying to clear things out of here because we actually are going to have to move. This building has been sold. Uh, and so you can see in all the videos in the background, I store my fifth wheel trailer here. We've got our Dodge pickup, which tows the fifth wheel, and our car trailers. We've got the enclosed car trailer stored here. Uh, there's times we move it out when we have too many customers' vehicles overflowing. And so there's been times when we've had oh, six customers' vehicles in here. And um, we try not to try not to get that crowded. It's a lot of... Uh, Sometimes it gets to be like Tetris in here. We got to move stuff around all the time. So anyway, that's what's coming up. Hope you stick with us and see how this thing goes. They're not real exciting. They're pretty, pretty, <laughs> uh, pretty routine. They're similar to the bug conversions. You got a front and rear um, battery boxes. It's the same setup, the AC50 um, with um, 35 of the Kalb 230 amp hour cells, and they're split between the front and rear, and it's a, just a clean and simple conversion that will make this a, a trouble-free nearly maintenance-free, uh, fun little vehicle. So, hope you stick around and, and check out the process. See ya.